Hey guys, hope you're all doing good and welcome back to the channel. I'm pretty sure many of you would have noticed the dome shape under a car or a truck. Well, that is a differential and it is mounted on the rear axle. In today's video, we'll be discussing the rear axle. Talking about the differential, we have made a separate video on it. The link is in the description below. Do check it out. Coming back, the rear axle helps in transmitting power from the engine to the wheels and it also carries the weight of the automobile. The rear axles are of two types live axle and dead axle. In the live axle, the power is transmitted to the wheels, whereas the dead axle simply supports the wheels. A dead axle is also called a stationary axle. A horse-driven vehicle has a dead axle which supports the rear weight of the vehicle. In a front-wheel drive car, the rear axle is the dead axle. Talking about the live axle, the differential is supported by the inner end of the live axle. The live axle supports the weight of the rear wheel, bending load and also the side thrust when the wheels are cornering. Now, let's see the construction of the rear axle. In light commercial vehicles, a high point type rear axle construction is used. When the load carrying capacity of the vehicle increases, the axle ratio also has to be increased to give the required torque to the rear wheels. The ratio between the pinion gear and the ring gear is the axle ratio. But when the axle ratio is approximately 8 is to 1, that is the ring gear rotates one time for every 8 revolutions of the pinion gear, then the single bevel gear axle is avoided and a worm and worm wheel arrangement or a double reduction arrangement is used to get the desired ratio with increased strength. To withstand various stresses, medium carbon alloy steel containing nickel, chromium and molybdenum are used to manufacture axles. Now, we'll talk about the types of rear axle casing. There are three types, the split type axle casing, the banjo type axle casing and carrier type axle casing. The first type is a split type axle casing. In this type, the axle casing is made into two halves, the central housing and the extensions. The central housing contains a differential and two extensions are bolted on both sides of the central housing during assembly. The major disadvantage of this type is, in case of any fault, the whole rear axle has to be removed and then disassembled. This type of axle is no longer under production or used. The next type is the banjo type axle casing. Since it's shaped like a banjo, it's called the banjo type axle casing. In this type, the differential unit is carried in a separate carrier. While assembling, the carrier is bolted to the axle casing. The half shafts slide into the assembly through the opening in the axle casing. In case of any repairs, the half shafts can be easily removed from the side and the differential assembly can be removed by opening up the bolts. The last type is a carrier type axle casing. It is similar to the banjo type except for that of a carrier. The differential is installed in a rigid, malleable cast iron carrier to which the axle tubes are pressed and welded together. A domed plate is fitted to the rear end of the casing to provide access to the differential. This type is the most widely used casing these days. So that's it for today guys. In our next video, we'll be talking about the types of loading and the types of rear axles. So stay tuned and until the next one, bye.